Welcome guys, I'm the Lame Average Techie and today I'll be showing you how to configure a combination of layer 2 and layer 3 interfaces on a single Juniper switch. For the layer 3 interfaces in this tutorial, we'll be using IRB or internal root bridge interfaces and assign them to specific VLANs to create a routable VLAN interface. Okay, so first things first, if you have a look at the lab here, what I've got is I've got four hosts and you can see that they're Two of them are in the same subnet. We've got 192.168.1.10, 192.168.1.11. Then we've got a 2.10 and a 3.10. They are all connected to a QFX uh, virtual switch and the QFX is connected to a QFX packet forwarding engine. And this would be the QFX routing engine. So let's have a look at the config on the QFX switch here. We're just going to, I've already got a session open here. So we're just going to log in here with the predefined username and password. And as soon as we're in, we're just going to CLI mode and we're going to configure and we do a show. So you can see here that I've got very little config on here. I've just got the, the basic config to allow SSH and uh, we've got the EM0 and M1 interfaces, which are needed for the packet forwarding engine and routing engine communication. And as you can see, there's no VLANs configured. There are no interfaces configured. All right, so let's have a look at our hosts. So we've got the four hosts and uh, they're also virtual machines running uh, Windows Server Edition. So if we open up command prompt here and we try and ping any of the other hosts, so ping 192.168.1.11, you'll notice that there's no communication. And the same would be for anything in the other subnets, 2.10, not reachable, and 3.10, also not reachable. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enable communication between these two hosts here. And the way we do that is, firstly, we're going to configure VLANs. So for this one, I'm going to, I'm going to use VLAN 10 for these two PCs. Then I'm going to use VLAN 20 for that one and VLAN 30 for that one. We just type in the VLAN name, VLAN 10, and we give it a VLAN ID. All right, we're just going to make it VLAN ID 10 as well. Then we can do the same for VLAN 20 and VLAN 30. Now, if we do a show pipe compare, We'll see that, okay, we've added the, the VLANs and we can now go ahead and commit this configuration. All right, so if we do a run show VLANs, we'll see that we've got our three VLANs with the VLAN tags we specified, but we've got no interfaces in those VLANs. All right, so because we don't have any interfaces, we would still not be able to ping any of the other hosts. So let's just try 1.11 again. They are now, the VLAN is created, so still no communication. So what you need to do then is you will need to assign interfaces to these VLANs. If we look at the lab here, so we've got interface XE000, XE001, 002, and 003. So the first two interfaces we're gonna have a look at is XE000 and XE001. How you assign an interface to a VLAN is we go into set, we first need to go top because we are under the edit VLAN stanza. So we go top, we say edit interfaces and we can then set XE000 unit zero as unit zero is a logical uh, interface. Family ethernet switching that enables the switching functionality on the interface and we specify VLAN. So for these two interfaces, we're going to configure VLAN 10. All right, so we can do the same for XE001. Also going to be VLAN members VLAN 10. So if we do a show pipe compare now, you'll see that we've added these interfaces. So just for easier identification, we're just going to uh, add descriptions to these interfaces. So we do that set interfaces XE000 description. I'm just gonna name it host one. 
remember that if you include any spaces in your description that you need to uh, put your description in inverted commas. All right, so we're going to do the same for XE001. Just going to make that host two. Right, so we just show pop compare now. We'll see that we've got the interfaces correctly set up. We do a commit. And if we do run show VLANs now, we should see these two interfaces in that VLAN. Right, so let's go back and try our ping again. And now it's working. We can then continue creating the VLAN interfaces for uh, the other two hosts or assigning the interfaces to the correct VLANs. So we have um, XE002, which is connected to host three. That's not going to work. So you set XE002, unit zero family ethernet switching. And we're going to assign this one to VLAN member or VLAN 20. All right, and then we're going to do the same for, v, for interface 003. And that's just going to be VLAN 30. And we can do the same. We can do uh, descriptions. Set XE002 description host 3 and 003 description host 4. Right, so now our interface config should be fine. We can then do a commit. And if we do a run show VLANs again, then we'll see that we've got 002 and 003 in the correct respective VLANs. Okay, so now let's try this ping again. So let's try 2.10. Sorry, I'm just going to move this one down a bit so you can see we're trying to ping host 3 and there's host 4. And it's not working. 3.10. All right, still not working. So the reason why it's not working is because these hosts fall outside of the network that these guys belong to. For these hosts to be able to reach these hosts, you would need routing. Remember, routing is required for inter-network communication. And as we can see here that the subnet differs, we've got 192.168.1, and here we've got 192.168.2. And these are all slash 24 networks. So these hosts fall outside of the network of these hosts. Okay. so. That brings us to our next part of the tutorial. Do you need to configure IRB interfaces or internal root bridge interfaces? We just go edit interfaces, IRB. And for this one, you would need to configure IP addresses. Remember, we're going to configure an IP address on this internal root bridge interface. And this IRB interface would then become the default gateway of our hosts. So for instance, if we is that what's still open? If we look at the IP config on this box, we'll see that 192.168.1.1 is the default gateway configured here. Okay. I mean, this you can change, but uh, I made it 192.168.1.1. And that means we're going to configure the IRB interface for this specific VLAN with an IP address of 192.168.1.1. All right. So seeing that it is unit or oh, VLAN 10, we're going to configure unit 10. I just like to use the same unit number as the VLAN tag. The reason for that is you can create 4,094 uh, logical units on an interface and you can create 4,094 VLANs on a switch. So they correlate quite nicely and it's just easier to identify. The main difference here is instead of using family ethernet switching, we will be using family INET. The family INET means we're going to assign an IP address to this interface. So set unit 10 family INET address, and you're going to type in the IP address of the interface. Now you need to specify the subnet mask. If you don't, what it'll do is it'll autocomplete to a slash 32. That, uh, that's not going to work. So we're just going to specify the subnet here. 
slash 24. Now just be careful, your previous interface config will still be there. So now we just need to delete that. We just do delete unit 10 family inode address and we type in the slash 32 address. We do a show. Now only this IP address is there. Okay. Uh, go back into edit interfaces IRB. We're going to do the same for the other VLANs. So if we have a look at this uh, box over here and we do an IP config, you'll see that the gateway is 2.1. Right, so that means that we're going to create another interface on the QFX. This one is going to be unit 20 because we've got VLAN 20 with a tag of 20. Right, and then it's just set unit 20 family inet address 192.168.2.1 slash 24. And we're going to do exactly the same for unit 30. So unit 30 family inet address 3.1. So if we do a show pipe compare now, we've configured three IRB interfaces and we've given them IP addresses. Now, if we do a commit, Right, it uh, succeeded. So let's see if we jump back to host 1.10. Going to minimize there. Let's see if we've got internet network communication now. Just make sure that uh, our normal ping is working. So from 1.10 uh, to 1.11, that's still working. Let's see if we can ping 2.10. Okay, we still can't, and 3.10. Right, we still can't. The reason for that is we've created these IRB interfaces, but they are not tied to the VLAN. So if we go into top edit VLANs again, we do a show. We've got these VLANs here with the VLAN IDs, but there's no routable layer three interfaces assigned to them. So how you do that is you edit VLANs, VLAN 10, you say set layer three interface IRB.10. Right, we can go up, we can go edit VLAN 20, set layer three interface IRB.20, and oops, edit VLAN 30. That's not going to work. Edit VLAN 30, set L3 interface IRB.30. Now, if we do a show, let's just go up to VLANs. We do a show. We've got VLAN 10 with a layer 3 interface IRB.10, VLAN 20 with a layer 3 interface IRB.20, and VLAN 30 with a layer 3 interface IRB.30. Right, and then I just wanted to show you what it looks like if you do configure interfaces descriptions. So you can just do a run show interfaces description. And this will actually just show you that the links are up and where they are connecting to. It's just for easy identification. All right, so let's just do a commit. And technically we should now have internet with communication. Right, not sure why the ping took so long to start responding. Maybe the commit took a little bit of a little bit of time, but this is in a virtual environment. The response times aren't great. There is some additional latency, and things do take a little bit longer. But now you can see that we are able to ping 192.168.3.10 from 192.168.1.10. And let's see if we can ping 2.10. Yeah, I think the the ARP is just taking a little bit longer to populate, but once it has, then everything is working as it should. Right, so what have we achieved? What we've done is we've enabled communication between hosts in the same network, and then also we've enabled communication between hosts in one network and hosts in another network. This was done by enabling routing on the QFX switch here by using internal root bridge interfaces and assigning IP addresses to them. And if we have a look at the config here, 
we have the four interfaces with their descriptions with for each host and in their respective VLANs. Then we have the IRB interfaces with their respective IP addresses. And then we have those same IRB interfaces configured under their respective VLANs. And that's what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. Just as a side note, this is uh, far from an ideal setup. I just wanted to showcase the config. As we progress in these tutorials, we'll get to more uh, real world scenarios and uh, when to use layer two switches or when to use layer three switches, when to introduce routers and firewalls, etc. But for now, we're just going through the configuration basics. All right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hope to see you guys on the next one.